there's just something so refreshing about my dress up darling. Kitagawa just steals the show. Every scene she is in, you're just, your eyes are navigated towards her, not just because of her assets, but because she is just such a good character. She really just brings the show to life. And the contrast that she has with Gojo, our main male character, is phenomenal. And when I look at an episode like this, and I know many are going to mainly key in on the uh, the plot reasons of why they like this episode, I actually like it because of just how we can throw stuff like that in while flowing the story, making it make sense, and getting good chemistry between the characters to see kind of how they would interact with individual gi given situations, but also how they have a little bit of uh, emotion as well some points where they might seem like very stoic or strong-willed, straightforward, but sometimes they can get very very embarrassed and cutesy, which we see Kitogawa get later on in the episode. So I actually love what this episode represents. It reminds me of why I love the romance in Slice of Life genre. This is a hell of a good anime. Like, I'm just gonna straight up say it before I go any further. If you're still on the fence about watching My Dress Up Darling, really just watch the first and second episode. It's not that long, obviously. We all know anime is about 20 minutes each, so that's about 40 minutes. That's not even a movie runtime length, so when you put that in perspective, it's not that long. You can definitely sit some time out of your day to watch a 40-minute show at the time, currently with how much, you know, is out, and see if you actually enjoy this series or not. And I feel like the series definitely deserves to be watched. I feel like many are starting to hop on board just because of how good it actually is. Cloverworks, Studio Cloverworks, is really putting in their A game for this, which I really d expected no less. I mean, as I've talked about when I did my first impressions of My Dress Up Darling, Studio Cloverworks, they do have a track record of making very beautiful anime. They have made continuously beautiful projects that everybody will recognize if I was to like, mention certain titles. So basically, they are known for high quality art and animation. The biggest problem that they usually have is that they pick up too many projects and things just go down in the crapper, basically. That's usually what happens. And I really hope that My Dress Up Darling does not go down that route, because just this episode and the last episode has been phenomenal. And from what I have seen from the manga readers that have read the manga, they have said that the content that is being adapted is just great. It is like one by one and expanding upon it, making it better than even the manga in some areas. And that as you all know, if you've watched me, is what I seek the most from an anime adaptation. Because an anime should be able to use its medium. It should be able to use its actual advantages to surpass the manga in a lot of areas. Because, yes, the manga will have a lot of advantages over, let's say, the anime. There will be some panels that just look outright fantastic, and the artwork of the anime will never be able to compare. But that's where the anime can secede, is with movement of the characters, and just the overall life and movement movement and the interactions of the characters throughout this episode, especially just the measurement scenes, besides just looking at the fan service, there is a lot of movement, and I like how it feels like the characters are alive. It feels like they actually are living and breathing, and my immersion isn't shattered while I am watching the episode. I love my Dress Up Darling, and I feel like Studio Cloverworks is really putting in their entire A-game to make this as good as they possibly can, and I can see it. I think many of us can agree. We can all see how good these first two episodes are, and I hope that the quality can stay consistent until the anime wraps up, and maybe eventually get a season two. Now, speaking of the anime, I do want to talk something briefly about the manga. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Like, it's very hard for me not to want to read the manga right now. Like, I, I will say this, I think it's harder to hold back reading the manga for My Dress Up Darling than it was for me to hold back, you know, reading the light novel of Mushoku Tensei. I'm just, I gotta say it, like, it, it just, I have a soft spot, a really soft spot for some really good romance slice of life, like, a really good, and it, it's rare to really run across something that is just really get you. and My Dress Up Darling is hitting that, and... I am so tempted in just reading the manga tonight. Like, I am that tempted. Like, I I, I was honestly, when I watched the first episode last week, I, I just wanted to stop what I was doing and just read the manga and catch up. It was that good. But I was like, man, this is such a nice, refreshing premise, and the characters are nice, I don't see anything that is just over the top or melodramatic, it seems like it's a genuinely good story, so it's really hard. Like, I... I 
I'm going to try to resist because I do want to stay anime only to kind of give my overall feelings and vibes of how I feel about the anime. But I, oh man, it's hard. It's really hard stopping myself from reading the manga. But okay, let's, uh, let's actually get into, you know, episode two. Let's dive into it. So basically, to kind of summarize this episode, if you're looking at it with face value... There's a lot of fan service. Like, that, that's the first thing I think many are going to get from the episode. They're going to probably take screenshots, uh, you know, and just be like, man, this this character, Kitagawa, she is beautiful. And there, there, there's going to be, like, so much memes and stuff about it. But at the same time, when you look past that fan service you know, exterior, there's a lot going on. It shows a level of commitment and trust between the two characters, Gojo and Kitagawa, and their overall hobby or trade that they enjoy. For instance, Kitagawa, she likes, you know, cosplay, and Gojo, he likes to make dolls or make clothing for the dolls. And so when you see the two interacting within this episode, there is a mixture of human emotion and also their overall passion for what they actually love thrown into the situation. Situation. And we're led to believe that maybe Kitagawa really is just straightforward and doesn't care about her body being viewed by Gojo throughout the episode. But as soon as he does a leg measurement and all that, and he doesn't really pay attention much, she gets very embarrassed, which implies that she was embarrassed the entire time, but she was putting on an act. So I do like that. I really do like the little details we got throughout the episode with her, with him getting the measurements and just seeing how flustered he got and how she clearly was aware of how flustered he was, but she didn't want to press the issue any further to kind of embarrass him. So it shows a little bit more about her character. She just didn't want to be that type of person in front of him because it might hinder the progress of making a cosplay outfit. But on top of that as well, I do love just how she doubles down on her degeneracy at the beginning of the episode. And it's easily one of the funniest moments of the entire episode because it's like, I feel like all of us that have played, like, say, any type of game, you pr you've probably seen, at the very least, like, an Arrow game. In, in anime, they're mentioned. They're, they're definitely mentioned in anime. And typically, it's always the guy character that plays an Arrow game. That, that's how it always goes. That's always how it's labeled as. And even in real life, when you think about games, especially like an Arrow game, you would never picture a female playing one like that. You you wouldn't. You really wouldn't. Let, let's just let's keep it real with each other. And so when Kitagawa actually says that, but then you have Gojo, he's like, wait, I didn't think females liked that type of stuff. And she just is like, yeah, we do, and all that. And it's just like, I feel like that's very true. I just feel like there's not a lot of talk or discussion about it. And I just find it entertaining. I just, I love how she really doubled down on the degeneracy with an arrow game. And then when she started to explain its overall plot, it was just like, oh my goodness. Like, uh, what's hilarious to me is that I feel like many of us that have, like, watched anime, read manga, played games, were so desensitized to certain elements that when she started talking about, let's say, like, a whole school filled with girls, an all-girls school, and just, uh, the president, like, the principal's, like, son gets enrolled there, you know, it, it's kind of like, that isn't technically what would normally happen, the usual, but it happens so often in, let's say, a manga or anime, that that's what, that's what you come to expect, so it's actually pretty funny, I actually really, really like that little detail, just kind of how it opens the doorway, showing how we've gotten used to so many different things in that type of world, and it's refreshing seeing a female character being the one to kind of open that door and show this crazy, wacky world that normal people aren't actually used to whatsoever, and so it kind of lets Gojo know that, yeah, he might make dolls, he has some interesting hobbies, but it's clear as day that maybe being an otaku, being someone that loves anime and manga, it could be a very weird for those that have nothing to do with it whatsoever. So yeah, it's it's a really good episode. Like, I really love this episode, and especially the ending with the grandpa just kind of walking in and just being like, what? And then, you know, he our main character, Gojo, is just so stoic. He literally is just writing notes, not caring. Like, what a Chad. Like, seriously, what a freaking Chad. But, uh, yeah, it just, it's a good series. It's a really good anime. I... I can't wait for episode 3. I cannot wait to talk about it. It's very rare for me to sit down and talk about a romance show because usually there's not really a lot to talk about, but this anime really does have a lot to talk about, and I can't wait to carry it on with the next episode review. But I'm going to leave it at that, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot, and if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click that bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.